Hello and welcome to Business Launch. I'm Nisha Bodar and with me as always is my co-anchor Pavitra Parekh. Let's begin now with the market uh, check then. And yes, uh, markets opened on a weak note today and there has been a fair bit of volatility through the day. At the moment it was looking like it's uh, much more resilient but then the volatility and the weakness and the downtick in the red really continues. But still I would say that Nifty 50 even though has lost 40 points at the moment has defended overall even at weak open the 17,500 level and it managed uh, to do that today as well. When it comes to bank nifty, well that is uh, underperforming the key indices today so the financials, some of them are really leading the charge when it comes to the weakness in the market and mid caps are showing good amount of outperformance sitting pretty in the green with 0.36% gain and that's why probably the market strength is also looking much stronger in favor of the advances because of the more Order market participation. On my screen, some of uh, the cement players are doing extremely well in trade today, and also IT sector is performing well, while some of the big heavyweights like Reliance Industries are a drag. Pavitra. Oh, absolutely. Cement is definitely the sector of the day and uh, IT is what is uh, lagging. Uh, IT also actually has seen a fair bit of recovery right now. If you see the IT index is actually one of the top gaining indices. So if you take a look at it, TCS, Infosys, Wipro all clocking in good gains. So IT has definitely made a comeback today. But if you take a look at what's happening in our markets in the broader context of Asia, you'll see that we're doing quite well. It's just around a 30-point cut that we're seeing versus cuts in Hang Seng and the Taiwanese index of over 1%. What's also holding up well in our markets today is the consumer pack. So some of the bigger names will be up few, the likes of Britannia, Nestle, HUL, all of these looking quite good. And then some of the hotel stocks are really surging. So take a look at EIH, Karmath Hotels, big gains coming in on an otherwise subdued day of trade. So that's what's going on as far as, as the market action goes. We'll come back to this. But first up, our top story, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman flags an uncertain global economic environment as a key challenge for India and calls for greater cooperation with the United, uh, with the United States. Speaking at the U.S.-India Business Council Summit, she also said that the RBI is fairly clued in on the U.S. Fed policy calls and also hopes that inflation data doesn't surprise further. Listen in. Uh, mutual understanding, particularly at a time when the world is so divided, when the world is so engaged in such activities, which you think, who exactly would want these to happen? But it, when it is happening, None of us feel empowered enough to stop it. So we are at very severe challenging times. And therefore, I would think such engagement at this level will only further strengthen common shared values between India and the US. In spite of all the challenges, and we are confident that irrespective of the steps central banks around the world would take to protect their economy, to ensure that their economies um, given enough uh, uh, monetary support. I still repeat this, which I did mention before entering this room to the uh, board members. We are confident, and I'm, I also know there is a representative of the Reserve Bank in this crowd. We are confident that the steps that the US Fed may take or the European Central Bank may take Indian Central Bank, the Reserve Bank, is fairly clued in into the developments which are happening all around, and they are confident of handling the Indian monetary policy without major blips or rise and falls. Inflation is not red-lettered. I hope it doesn't surprise many of you all. We have shown that in the last couple of months, uh, we were able to bring it under some manageable levels. All right, some very important comments coming in from the finance minister of the country. Moving on, just days after former Tata Sons chairman Cyrus Misri passed away in a car accident, well, Roads and Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari has said that an order to make seat belts compulsory for all the passengers in cars will be issued shortly and those not following the new rules will be penalized. Let's listen in to what he has to say. Already there is a law. Even for the people who are sitting on the back seat, even that is mandatory for them to take the seat belt. In the front side, a driver's seat and a driver's side seat, if they are not taking seat belt, 
then there is a some horn some sound is there now we are making issuing the law by which manufacturer will take that even the back seat people also they are not taking the belt then also there will be a sound for uh, making uh, creating awareness in the mind of the people and if the we find people that they are not taking belt then there will be fine of 1000 rupees either it is back seat or front seat so i feel that to, to taking fine from the people is not our intention we want to create awareness between the mind of the people and we have to change the mind of the people that they should respect law and there should be a fear for the law that is exactly the that is exactly the country needs all these thing today all right that is mr nitin gadkari saying that this all important decision of making seat belts mandatory for all passengers even in the rear seats will be implemented and put into order in just the next few days but with that we're going to get into our first short break on the show when we come back we tell you what you can expect from apple's iphone 14 launch event today stay tuned for that Welcome back you're still tuned into Business Lunch and let's bring you an exclusive now there's a large deal brewing in the pharma sector and sources are suggesting that Suvin Pharma is on the block this is information that Nisha has gathered Nisha take us through what you're picking up on this So Pavitra the two stocks that we are uh, really looking at in terms of the impact of our story which was broken just an hour back is Suven Life Sciences as well as Suven Pharma and Suven Life Sciences being a beneficiary of a deal brewing in Suven Pharma being a group company is the one which has spiked up more and being more impacted now sources with direct knowledge have shared with us that the company Suven Pharma's promoters have initiated talks with the probable suitors to sell a controlling stake in the company Suven Pharma and uh, for that they may have hired an investment bank which is in touch with some of the private equity uh, firms which are positive and are bullish on a control buyout of a pharma company in India and even some strategics could be in the fray for this particular transaction now the whole concept for Suven group is that which demerged Suven Life Sciences and Suven Pharma just 2 years back they wanted to monetize the pharma business so that they can raise enough capital to infuse the drug development businesses of Suven Life Sciences which is a cash guzzling uh, proposition and therefore they are looking at this particular transaction now we do also gather that the dividends that were really raised from Suven Pharma was being utilized for infusing into capex and development of drugs in life sciences we reached out to the company but they did not comment on this particular deal development they did share that suven life sciences had announced a rights issue in uh, this particular year middle of this year All right Nisha thanks a lot for taking us through all of the details by the way take a look at the Concord stock you have important news flashing at the bottom of your screen uh, the union cabinet had taken up a proposal to revise the railway land license fee issue so i think that that has probably come through and that is why you're seeing a big spike in the uh, in the Concord stock as well so i think the yeah the land license fee has been revised it was 6% earlier and it is now currently at 1.5% that's what we're picking up but keep your eye out on that stock let's also bring you the insurance data which is coming in the stocks are in focus because the premium for general insurance industry for the month of august has gone up 12% on a year over year basis and year to month it is up 19% if you look at the private insurers premium is up 9% this is for the month of august and year to month it is up 19% as well meanwhile standalone health insurance premium has gone up 28% in august and 27% year to month if we drill it down to the specific companies we'll pull a few of those up for you let's start with icici lombard as well as bharat the axa premium in august is up 21% and the market share uh, two month rises around 60 basis points for new india assurance the premium in august has uh, gone down by 1.2% and the market share year to month has also seen a drop of around 160 basis points finally let's take a look at star health the premium is up 13% in august 12% year to month but the company has lost market share so do keep your eye out on that one it is down 27 basis points for the market share for star health so nisha that's an important and data that we're tracking from the general insurers yeah so that's uh, data from general insurance but let's uh, hop across to the tech toy space and it's time that time of the year when tech giant apple takes center stage with its much awaited annual event and as apple gears up for the big reveal of iphone 14 at its mega event for far out today reema tendulkar is standing by with the um, 
details of what's really expected in this new generation phone and what is in store at the event. Reema. Thanks so much for that. All eyes are going to be on Apple today, the world's biggest company and the most influential. It's all set to unveil iPhone 14 series at the Far Out Media event today. And this is the most anticipated and awaited of the annual events from Apple. It will take place at the Steve Jobs Theatre in the Apple Park campus in Cupertino, California. So what's expected? The new generation iPhone 14, which is likely to come in four models. The base model, iPhone Max, iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. But the biggest change this time is going to be that we're unlikely to get an iPhone 14 mini. You remember the iPhone 12 mini, the iPhone 13 mini? But this time, we may not get an iPhone 14 mini and the big reason for that is sluggish sales. Sales of minis are reportedly in low single digits. As with every subsequent launch, there will be an improvement. The camera gets better, the processor gets better, gets faster. There are likely to be design changes as well, which will help the users get more screen space. But the one I'm personally excited about is the rumor that the display is now going to have the battery percentage in number and not just a visual representation of how much power you have left on your phone. So currently, what do all Apple users do when you need to find out how much battery you've got left? You swipe down to the control center and then you see the the exact battery percentage so current phones only have that icon but now going ahead you're going to get that icon the battery icon plus the percentage now the big question for all iPhone fans is should you be rushing out today and buying a new one immediately well people in the know say that for iPhone 14 is going to be similar in its form factor to iPhone 13 which means minor upgrades and tweaks so probably there is no reason to rush out immediately no big dramatic changes the last big upgrade which took place in iPhone in terms of its look, feel, everything was iPhone 10 or iPhone X which had, uh, which had ditched the touch ID with your finger and went for the face ID for locking and unlocking. So this time, as I said, the rumor is that we're unlikely to see such a dramatic change. Um, the next big change that the analysts are going to be watching out for from the Apple headquarters is will iPhone imitate its rival Samsung and come out with a foldable version? But that's unlikely to take place this time or perhaps next. The next topic that we're going to be talking about, what do you watch in terms of iPhone sales and pricing? Now, iPhone is not only amongst the most expensive phones, it's also the most popular, well, at least in the United States iPhone recently has overtaken Android to claim majority of the US smartphone market and that in itself is a big feat. The market share of Apple now stands at over 50% according to CounterPoint research. The installed base of iPhone is close to 1 billion units. If you assume the average phone life of 4 years, we are looking at 250 million units of annual sales every year without enticing new Apple users into the family. Now the point on pricing. Well, over the last few years at least, Apple has not increased the base price of its iPhone models. So iPhone 12, iPhone 13 series all started at $799. But of course, the, you know, the more expensive versions, the Max versions, had carried a $1,000 price tag plus. But this time, will Apple increase the base price as the cost of components and supply chain disruptions have resulted in a higher cost of production? That is something all iPhone users, including me, will be watching very carefully. Back to you. Reema, thanks a lot for getting us all of those details and we're watching out for this, but no one is looking more excited than my co-anchor Nisha right now. Nisha, I know you would be looking forward to this event. You know, I uh, in December, I remember in New York, there was a complete frenzy to buy out uh, iPhone. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you won't believe, du during Omicron, the stores were shut and still people were booking it online and just going and picking the package from the stores. Yeah. But uh, my biggest worry is that there is not going to be a mini iPhone yeah. uh, 14 because I really like my iPhone 13 mini mm. and this is just so handy and less weight in my hand. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, a little bit of a dampener. Okay, let's see how that event plays out today. We are going to be watching that and we'll bring you all of the announcements. But with that, we're going to get into a short break now. Up next, my colleague Mangalam will get us updates from India's first Nika convention. That looks exciting. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Business Lunch. Now, sneakers are turning out to be a real popular asset class. 
Yes, you heard it right. In these times of market volatility, well, sneakers is a seemingly cash proof, uh, crash proof asset, which the youth are really looking to deploy a lot of their money in. In fact, our colleague Mangla Malu attended a sneaker convention to understand more about the buyers, sellers and the opportunity. Take a look. I'm used to reporting from outside of stock exchanges, but tell you what, this is an India sneaker convention which is taking place, done by Main Street Marketplace. What people do out here are buy and sell sneakers. How old are you? 11. You're 11 and how many sneakers do you have? More than 7. More than 7. How much money have you spent on sneakers so far? Um, 5 lakhs probably. 5 lakh rupees? Do you buy and resell them as well? No, I just, um, um, I don't sell, I only buy. You want to see more excitement? Get in. It is Disneyland for a bunch of people we now call sneaker heads. Guys who are addicted to buying sneakers and selling them as well. We have about 5,000 people who actively buy and sell with us. Uh, Consumer-wise, we've sold to 30, 35,000 people and customers. Um, and you know, for us, that's just dipstick. That's proof of how big this market is and how much can happen. Uh, average selling price here is about 35,000 rupees. Um, upper limit is, you know, a few crores. But is there average. a shoe here which is worth a crore or something? I don't think I should comment on that. <laughs> This is a culture which is growing a market size of almost two to three billion dollars in India right now. It's a global culture and it's only catching further steam in India. And these physical events are happening now that COVID is behind us. The market size, you know, you'd say it's two to three billion dollars. I'd say it's 20 to 30. Someone else would say it's half a billion. It's all in the air. Uh, this aftermarket has not been aggregated yet. We're doing it right now. Over the next six to eight months, we'll have enough data to give you a very accurate estimate. What's kind of revenue your what business kind of revenue does? Your business does. Um, we're about three months from hitting a hundred crore annual run rate. Uh, on that, we pull about a twenty percent gross margin. Uh, what is it that you think is driving this culture? So, I mean, everybody's heard of a SaaS business. That is very popular right now. Software as a service. We run something known as a SaaS business. It's status as a service. It's almost a primal instinct to want what other people have. I mean, the, the question that really drives this is what do you do after you've made all that money? This one is a collaboration with Travis Scott, a Nike Air Jordan 1. This one would set you back by a good 1,40,000 rupees. Yes, 1,40,000 rupees for this pair of shoes, Supreme. So Supreme has uh, you know collaborated with Dunks. And out there, this is what the shoe looks like. Uh, you have a couple of stars made out here with the Supreme logo here. And this shoe would set you back by 1,30,000 rupees. Pierce the resistance out here in this sneaker convention are these. These Dior shoes actually which have, as you can see, a Dior logo out here. The Nike logo too has, uh, you know, collaborations with Dior Insignia. These shoes will set you back by 7 lakh rupees. If you're wondering what shoes worth 7 lakh rupees look like, this is what they are. I don't know how many of these I can just steal and take them home. Ah, I'm telling you, these are mad. All right, that is some madness playing out at the India Sneaker Convention. Looks like a lot of fun, but the sneaker craze is definitely real. On that light note, we're going to wind down on this edition of Business Lunch. The markets are moving towards the flat line, just around 25 points lower on the Nifty. Thanks for tuning in. Midcap Radar is up next.